Dun, 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 dun. I see 14 people. Hi guys. Happy Thursday. That's what day it is, right? What day is it? I'm starting to forget. I see 19 of you guys. So I have posted the live video in the event. I've shared it to my page to Rembrandt Illustrations, uh, Paint Nights with Rembrandt Illustration group and my personal page. So hopefully you all will be able to find the event. And if for some reason you show up late and are watching this later, um, just make sure to drop a hashtag replay. Um, or guys, if your, your friends are uh, not internet savvy and have a hard time finding it, be sure to share. You can share this link to them in their messenger or to their page to help them find it. Yay! Hi everybody, no worries. We're in no rush, right? We've got nothing but time right now. Welcome to my kitchen. The comfort of my own home. I'm happy to be painting with you guys tonight. Yay, so we're gonna be painting Bigfoot. Did you see the new painting that I painted and posted? My Bigfoot that's sheltering in place, taking a nap. <laughs> Yay, so while we're waiting for everybody to check in, let's just do a little, uh, let's do, do a little check, see where everybody's from. If you are new and this is your first time painting with us, give me like a little wave or a thumbs up emoji and then let me know where you're from. I want to know uh, how old everybody is. I want to know where you're at. I want to know that you guys are all doing okay. This is a wellness check. Um, this is all about self-care and relaxation and fun. We're going to paint and we're going to have a really good time. So if you happen to um, miss this, like I said, or if you want to review it later because you felt I was going too fast, you can always re-watch the replay, stop, rewind, go back pause, fast forward, all the stuff. Yay, Spanaway and Tacoma, right on guys. This is like the, the truest uh, Puget Sound or Northwest painting ever, right? We're painting the woods, we're painting Bigfoot, we're gonna have a good time. So if you've never painted or drawn before, not to worry guys, uh, I'm gonna walk you step by step through everything. I'm gonna make sure that you get all the attention you need. If you get to a spot where you're stuck or you need help or there's a spot where you want to change something. I'm all about being flexible and about helping everybody. So don't be afraid to ask questions and say, slow down or can you repeat this? Uh, and I'm going to go over the supply list and then we're good. Yay, I love seeing everybody from all over. That's so cool. Got some Canadians in the house, right on. <laughs> Silverdale, Kitsap. West Virginia, what? All right, hi guys. Thanks for painting with us, that's so cool. Well, I'm expecting it's gonna take everybody a few minutes to catch up, so while we're waiting for everybody to log in, I'm just gonna go over the supply list with you guys. So if you bought a paint kit from me, um, then you should have one canvas, uh, at least one brush, and then all your primary colors, like white, black, blue, red, and yellow. If you have extra colors like purple or pink or teal, great. But all you need really for any of my paintings is the basic colors and I will show you guys how to mix those together to get the effects that you want. So we can create this whole painting with just one flat brush, but if you have like a little tiny detail brush for doing uh, Bigfoot and stuff, that'll definitely help you. Or when we do the trees and stuff, you should have you know, a little detail brush and then a bigger brush for doing all of our blending, okay? So we're gonna need a pencil, get a piece of scrap paper so you can practice the drawing techniques that I get, show you guys on how to draw Bigfoot. If you have some round, like a bowl or something um, for tracing, we might need this when you wanna draw your moon later. So if you have like a cup or a bowl or something that's round that you're not painting on, um, I'm just using an old Tupperware lid, that works great. Uh, so pencil, paper, brushes, uh, canvas, if you don't have canvas, paper works just fine. Um, if you don't have paper, use all your recycling that you have. We're sheltering in place, I'm sure the recycling's building up. Use the inside of an old cereal box, like the back cardboard or some of those Amazon boxes and get them out. If you don't have an easel and you guys are painting with me today, um, 
if you revert view back to the page, I have been posting some small tutorials and there is a tutorial on how to create a really small and easy, fast DIY painting easel just out of cardboard with some basic supplies. So if you guys need the link to that, just let me know and I can drop that in the comments later. If you're painting with me tomorrow when we paint the, um, the Seattle skyline. So here's this painting here. Ooh, this is what we're painting tomorrow. You will need an easel for this because your painting needs to be upright to get the, the drippy drips. Okay. So for this painting, we don't need an easel, but sometimes it's just kind of nice. So cool. I think everybody's here. Is everybody here? Do you have all your stuff ready? I hope so. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the painting around for the camera around for a second. Here's our painting, guys. So here's what we're working on. So my original um, is gone, and I've painted this multiple times. So this is one of the the paintings that I painted again after the fact. Um, so a little bit about me. I paint. Um, I've been painting for over 20 years, doing commission work, and I teach people all over the county how to paint along with me. I do murals and. Um, commissions and windows and original designs and portraits and I'm just going to show you guys some very basic techniques on how to get this going so we have our spacey sky we've got a moon with stars uh, we've got some northwest trees and we've got our big guy or gal or how, whoever you want this to be I'm glad that you're excited guys I'm excited too to share this with you. So how we're gonna break this painting down is we're gonna do it in three steps. And the first step is gonna be to do that colorful sky. And then the next step is gonna be to learn how to do the Bigfoot. And then next we're gonna add our moon and all the trees. You guys can do that, right? Three steps, no problem. So there's our painting, you guys can stare at it. I'm gonna put a blank canvas over it in the meantime, and I'll refer back to it when we need to. So there's our, there's our blank canvas. So are we all ready, guys? Do we have everything we need? All right, so some of you guys may have a soft bristle brush that's like this, and some may not have been able to find that, or they may have a bristle brush that's kind of stiffer and looks like this, crazy brush. Oh, Deborah, I'm so glad that you're able to tune in. So either one of these brushes will work for the sky. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways we can use these, okay? So if you have the soft bristle brush, you know, you can be blending like this. We're going to be using what are called hatching brush strokes to make clouds, okay? And if you have the pokey kind of brush like this, you can use what we call stippling, where you tap. Tap against the canvas like that, okay, to make to make clouds, so it's up to you. So what we wanna focus on when we're doing this, the sky is if you guys look at this, there's lots of colors everywhere. But the one thing that we have in common with all the colors going everywhere is that they're all kind of going at an angle. Do you guys see that? Hi, Crystal, thanks for joining us. No worries, you haven't missed a thing. We're just talking about our big brushes and how we can use our big brushes, okay? so. If you are using the colors red, blue, and white, there's no way that you can mix any of those colors for your sky in a bad way and it will, in a bad way at all. It'll all look good because blue, red, and white are all complementary colors. So I'm gonna do a little quiz before we get started here, guys. If you mix red and white together, what color do you get? Jerrica, you can use an angled brush, don't worry. You just gotta either, like I said, use the swiping technique like this, or you can still use the tapping brush stroke, and I'll show you how to do that. What does red and white make when you mix it together? Somebody give me an answer. Right on, pink, okay. So what happens if we mix pink and purple together? <laughs> we get more purple right? If you mix red and blue together, you get purple. If you mix white to any of those, you get a lighter combination of those colors. So again, so if we use red, blue, or white, we're going to get a pretty sky. So we want to make sure that when we're painting, we can use any combination of those colors, but we want it dark enough that when we add stars and stuff, they'll show up, okay? So here back to my blank canvas. So we're going to start with blue. So if you have a, ni a nice dark blue color, that'll work great. 
So I'm going to show you two ways we can do this. So I'm going to take my big brush and I'm just going to put a little bit on my brush to start, okay? You can always add more later. But I'm going to start up here in the top, top corner. All right, we got a little bit of a shadow. Is that better? Okay. And see, I can just use a wiping motion like this. This is called a hatching brush stroke where I'm basically wiping my brush off on the canvas, okay? And I don't need to do a whole a whole lot, just a little bit, just to get started, but we want that upper corner to be a little bit dark. If you have a little bit left on your brush, see I can wipe it off in another part of my canvas, okay? Or you can use this textured brush that's like this, or you can use the brush, oops, sorry, that you were just using, and you can use a tapping brush stroke like this. So I'm gonna get a different color, like I'm gonna add a little bit of red to my blue. So you can always pre-mix colors too, guys. So if you're worried about what colors are gonna go onto your canvas, here, I'm gonna show you on the plate. So always pre-mix your color if you're worried about what it's gonna look like first. So I took a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. See, and I made a nice, nice dark purple. And if that's too dark, you can add a little bit of white to it. But, um, so, so I can use that wiping brush stroke or I can use a tapping brush stroke like this where I'm just tapping. But I don't want to tap all over the place. I want to start in one area and then gradually move away from that to kind of create cloud shapes, okay? So if I don't like the texture of that, then I can just wipe away. If I have too much paint on my brush, wipe off your brush and just work with what you've got. Okay, it's better to have too little paint and then add more later. So see if I blend while the color is still on there. Do, do, do. I can merge those colors together a little bit. Okay. And if I want to, I can add, like if I want to lighten it up in a few areas, I can take my dirty brush and just a little tiny bit of white and I can add it on top of that. And I don't have to add it all over. I can just add it in a few spots if I want. So I started with blue in the corner and then you can use pink or you can use purple. And we're just gonna use those colors and we're gonna go across the whole canvas. So look, I even put red here. So you'll notice that even though I'm making these kind of patchy looking, they're all still kind of going at a slant, okay? And I don't have to go all the way across for each section. Like I could do a little bit of red there, or if I thought that was too dark, I could add a little bit of white over the top, or I can do blue over the top of that. What will happen if I mix red and blue while they're still wet. Look, you'll get purple. So here's the thing about acrylic paints, guys. Acrylic paints will blend really well while they're still wet. If they are dry, then the colors are not gonna mix together. So you wanna make sure that when you're blending that you're doing it in little, little areas, okay? So see how I've got some nice blue and pink colors? Are we worried or are we feeling super relaxed? Everybody's doing good, right? Okay, so all I want you guys to do is play with the combination of red, blue, and white. So you can mix some pinks on the side of your plate. You can mix some purples on your little mixing plate. You can mix different shades of blue. And look, see, I can either tap, 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 to create some cloudy texture or I can wipe. It's up to you which one you prefer, okay? But I do suggest that if you do the tapping technique that you're only using little bits at a time and if the colors only start to uh, merge together into one color, that means you're using too much paint or you're doing it while the paint is too, too wet, okay? So here, 
Na, na, na. So if you're worried about how much is too little or how much is too much paint, the best way to decide is to like dip your brush in and if you have a big gob of paint, wipe that off. So I like to use like the peanut butter knife technique where I wipe one side, wipe the other, and then I just have, you know, just enough for my brush to be wet with paint, but not like a full gob of paint, okay? So here's the other thing. If you're trying to create cloud shapes, you don't want the cloud to be all one exactly equal shape. You want it to be a little bit thicker in the middle and then maybe get a little bit thinner as it comes down and away from the middle. Okay, so see what happens when I'm using a combination of those, those pinks and purples and blues? It's pretty, right? So here, let's do a, let's do a cloud shape just so you guys can see what that looks like. So here, on the white. So for instance, if I wanted to create a cloud shape, I could start in the middle here. I would create by tapping like a cotton ball looking lumpy bumpy right there like that. And then as I have less paint on my brush, I would tap away and then tap away. So see how it's not all exactly the same thickness. It's a little bit skinnier on the ends. It's a little bit thicker in the middle. There's my cloud shape like that. So if I wanted to break that up and highlight that, I could take a lighter color like light blue or white or light pink or purple and I can tap that just along along the edge there or in a few spots in the middle and the more you tap while the paint is wet the more it will blend together so I want you to fill up your whole canvas from top to bottom with shapes like like this okay these don't all have to be exactly the same shape like i could do a blue cloud here i could do a pink cloud right here and look how i'm letting them touch each other okay so you can tap or you can swipe are we good so far so again if your colors we want our sky to be nice and dark so that it looks like nighttime, but not so dark that it's not gonna contrast with the black. So every once in a while you can add a little bit of, of white to soften the, soften the colors. Are we all breathing? Is everybody alive? How are we doing? What brand of paint am I using? <laughs> I'm using a student grade paint. Um, you can get pretty good, like the craft paints that you would normally get at like Walmart in the like in the craft section those tend to not have as good of a coverage or they tend to dry more quickly uh, because they're filled with more fillers than pigment you want to make sure that the paint that you get if you want really good coverage and to last and not dry out really quickly is like in a squeeze bottle um, and it says student grade on it and the way that the reason why I'm getting such good coverage here guys is some people have a tendency to be very delicate with the paint. And you wanna make sure that you're either pushing very firmly into the surface or wiping, wiping, when you're doing that wiping, don't be really gentle, just kind of push firmly with your brush. This is the first layer of paint that we're getting onto the canvas. So we wanna make sure that we're really creating a good barrier, a good layer of skin on the surface so that the rest of the paint that we put on top doesn't absorb into the canvas. We wanna make sure that um, this acrylic, cause acrylic is like a liquid plastic, that it's going to form a skin, okay? And if you don't get good coverage the first time, that's okay. Just come back in and you can do a second coat if you need to. All right. So I've been trying to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on with Rembrandt Illustration. Um, I'm trying to adapt to the changes just like everybody else is. And so usually I do public events. The online thing is, is newer for me. So I hope that it's good for you guys. And if you have suggestions on how I can make it better and more accessible for you guys, um, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. So please, please 
share your info with me. In the meantime, I've created a couple of different avenues for you guys to be able to connect with me more or to be able to create on a different level. So um, you may have noticed that I've been posting about something called Patreon, and Patreon is basically a website for um, different creators to create um, kind of like a subscription for people that that uh, follow their events or follow their creating or what they're doing, like musicians and um, or authors and poets and artists and things. So like, like for instance, I'm hosting these, these free online classes, uh, but I also sell original art and I teach drawing and um, all kinds of things. And so I created this Patreon account for people that may want more than just the free classes or they may want one-on-one -on -one lessons or tips or whatever. So um, if you subscribe to the Patreon, there's different levels. There's like a $9 subscription, there's like a $20 subscription, um, et cetera. And for each level, you get different perks. Like I'll write you a postcard every month with a new doodle. You'll have access to all of my coloring pages that I um, that I have. Uh, you'll have unlimited access to all of my painting classes, not just the individual free ones. And then when I do tutorials or um, I'm sharing drawing tips or if I'm working on a new mural or any of that stuff, I do share a lot of that on my Instagram and on my Facebook. But um, but you know you'll get even more access. And you'll be able to access it whenever you want if you're on the Patreon. So if you guys are interested in at least looking at that, I've posted a link to that um, on the event, but also on my Facebook page. If you are trying to get a second coat, yeah, you would just go back in. So for instance, up here, if this is dried and I needed to add a little bit more, I could still go in over the top. And if you accidentally get a little pink in there or a little white in there, again, it's no problem because... We're using all complementary colors, okay? So don't feel like you have to rush through this process either, guys. Like, take your time. Just kind of, you know, the reason why I'm not saying put this much blue here and this much purple there is because I really feel like art, uh, yes, there are certain ways to accomplish certain things and learn certain things, but I also feel like there is a certain amount of um, personal... Uh, personal preference when you're painting like some colors may not appeal to me that appeal to you some people some colors may not appeal to other people that appeal to you so you get to choose your palette and kind of go I really like more purple or I really like more pink and you can make that happen in accordance with what you want um, and Abby, if you're worried about muddling it up, then just wait for the paint to dry. That's the, the main thing. So my two rules that I tell all my painters when they paint with me is are, are uh, acrylic paint blends best when it's wet. So that means that as soon as it's fresh and on your brush, it's going to blend, 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 the more you run your brush over it. If you don't want it to blend and you want to just layer the paint, um, so for instance, I have blue here and then I want to put... I don't know, white over the top of it, but I don't want them to mix together. You have to wait for the paint to be dry. Okay. Am I talking too fast? Are we doing okay here? How is everybody feeling so far? I'd love input. Hopefully we're just playing. So see, I'm doing a mixing mixture of tapping and wiping. Just make sure that when you're tapping, you're either tapping down at an angle or you're wiping so that your brush strokes are all going or your clouds are all going at an angle here. So you'll notice I have a variety of colors. They're not all exactly even, but they're all still going in that direction. You don't want to, the reason why we're doing it this way is because your job as an artist is to create an illusion. And one of the illusions that you create, or one of the things that you're trying to do is you're trying to subconsciously draw your viewer's eye where you want it to look without saying anything. So one of the ways that you can do that is by making your brushstrokes go in a certain way. So if I made some of my brush strokes go at an angle like this and then all of a sudden I switched and started making them go down. 
it might be confusing to my viewer. They wouldn't know why, you know, things were looking that way. So, so using the complementary colors is really helpful because then you can play without worrying that, you know, if they accidentally mix together, they're going to look, look, see, I can put purple over, like if I thought there was too much red there, I can put purple over the top of that or white and it turns it pink and it's not going to look bad no matter what, okay? The only thing we want to avoid when we're doing this, guys, is you don't want so much paint that you can literally scoop it off with your finger, okay? So if you can like blob it off with your finger, you probably have too much paint. Or if it's really, really shiny on the canvas, that means, calm down, calm down, guys. That's what that means. Okay, so I'm filling it in, filling it in. We're gonna fill up the whole sky. This is the Bigfoot painting, Carly. So this is what we, where we started. So look, it's a little bit different. So I'm putting pink in mine because I, I'm feeling the pink and purple tonight. But if you like more blues, you're gonna add more blues in your sky. I'm just feeling, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling the pink and the purples tonight. Yeah, we're doing the Bigfoot painting tonight. Oh, it's okay, Carly. Um, like I said, if you want to, you can come back to this event later and you can watch the replay. So after this live video is over, this video will be saved and you can share it or, you know, with other people or you can rewatch it yourself. See, if I wanted to fill that in and not quite make it so red, I could come back in with some blue over the top. So don't worry about being late. All we're doing now, Carly, is we're doing um, blue. I'm using a combination of blue, red, and white in the sky with my big brush. So we're just making some pretty sky colors, okay? And we're not so worried about the exact preciseness of the sky because, guys, we're going to end up painting over a lot of that with trees later. So don't worry about everything being just so remember it's supposed to be fun and it's practice and it doesn't have to be you know exactly like mine to be beautiful remember that <laughs> da, 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 da. so tapping or so we're using the stippling technique like this tap 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 or we're using a do you guys remember what this is called? Thatching brush stroke, okay? Where you're basically wiping your brush. Oh, I'm seeing some love hearts. Thanks, guys. Da, da, da. So, all ages, all abilities should be able to paint with us all the time. And I'm PG. <laughs> so... We're all safe that way. Feel free to share with your friends and family. And like I said, if you guys have questions while we're painting, I'm more than happy to, to answer. Are we having fun so far? Are we deep in concentration? I'm happy for the release of painting. I don't know about you guys, but this is so therapeutic for me. It's so nice to be able to connect with you guys and to be able to create something. It's really weird for me to not be able to hear you guys, though, and see your faces. So, you know, all the heart emojis, please. <laughs> We're starting to get more full. How are you guys doing? So what the tapping does is it kind of pushes the paint into the canvas. So if you're getting little spots where you're seeing like the little speckle of the grid of the canvas and you want to get rid of that, um, it's got to push, push more firmly or brush more firmly, get more paint. Da, da, da. I can't wait to see all your finished products. I'm sure they're gonna be amazing. 
I have had so much fun seeing all of the different results of all the different ages uh, and from all over the place. That is really special to me for you guys to share that with me and for me to show other people what you have. And the fact that we're able to create together in this kind of space is like, it's amazing. Amazing to me. Modern uh, technology is wild. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to get full. Hey, I paint a lot faster than a lot of people, though, too. So let me know where you guys are at. If you're at halfway, say, whoo, Danielle, I'm only halfway. Or if you're done and you're waiting for me and you're like, hurry up, I want to learn how to paint Bigfoot, let me know. But as long as you guys are having fun, I'm having fun. So we're using the combination of dark blue, red, and white, which means that we'll be able to make pink and purple and light blue. And we get those uh, fun sky colors going. And no combination of those together is going to look bad. They're all going to look beautiful. And we're using our stippling or our thatching brush strokes, right? Halfway and full. Okay, good. So if you are full and you are ready and waiting for the next step while everybody else is finishing up, I want you guys to clean off your brush, clean off your big brush. Uh, when we learn to paint Bigfoot, you're going to need a smaller detail brush and you're going to need a scratch piece of paper and your pencil to start out. Okay. So if you are done, go ahead and get that stuff together. Maybe you need a refill on whatever beverage you're drinking. Um, I'm just drinking the LaCroix. No paid advertising here. <laughs> Getting all full. All right. Oh no, Nicole, your feet is glitching. Is anyone else's feed glitching? Hopefully it's not too bad. It might be just me shaking the canvas because I keep hitting it. Let me know if you're getting a clear signal. Is anybody else's feed glitching? Well, you know, more people than ever are at home and more people than ever are using Facebook probably, especially right now. So those internet connections are probably super slow everywhere because everybody be on the internets. Oh, Nicole, I'm sorry, your feed is glitching. PM me, we'll have a private lesson, just you and me. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done too. I'm talking though while I'm painting, so I'm probably actually am a lot slower than you guys. We're getting there, we're getting there. Are you feeling happy with your painting so far? Does anybody have questions about how their painting is or things that they want to adjust? Oh yeah, well if you're working with a 5x7 canvas, then you're probably way ready to go. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> That's okay, I can't wait to see the tiny paintings too. Alright, so if you are done with your background, clean off your brush, get a pencil, get a scrap piece of paper, okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna do something to our sky before... Uh, we do all the other stuff and then we're going to learn how to draw the big guy. A really simple silhouette that you don't even need a stencil for. Can you guys believe that? Almost done. How's it looking on your side? 
Crystal, your paint isn't drying fast enough. If your paint is not drying, Crystal, then what I suggest is take, wiping off your brush and making it all dry and then running your dry brush over the canvas, okay? That means that you're probably using a lot of paint, okay? So if your paint is not drying, that means you're probably using a lot of paint and you should wipe off your brush and use a dry brush to move the paint around, okay? So the reason why I work in small areas is because I kind of put enough paint on my brush to work in that area and then when I'm out of paint, then I add more paint to my brush, okay? I don't add paint to my brush until everything is blended and it's almost dry where I've worked the paint at on, this, on the section on the canvas, okay? What do I think? What you guys think of my painting so far? How's your painting? All right, I'm just gonna do the bottom here and then we're gonna call it good. Da, 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 da. And for all of you lurkers out there, <laughs> for all of you people that aren't painting, how is it for you? How many lurkers? Give me a give me a thumbs up if you're a lurker and you're not painting and you're just watching. Come on, fess up. All right. <laughs> Aaron Lynn, yours doesn't look like clouds like mine. Maybe try more tapping. So if it doesn't look like clouds, are you getting more straight lines like back and forth like this? So if you're trying to make more clouds, make sure that when you're tapping, in a section that you're not just tapping in a straight line. You want to kind of tap up, tap down to make sure that you have that kind of bumpy texture. It does take practice. It does take practice for sure. Okay, my background is done. Can you use a heat gun? Yes, you can. You can use a hair dryer. If you have a hair dryer, that would definitely help your painting dry faster. Or you can just jerk it off the canvas and start fanning yourself for all of your hard work that you've done. For sure. All right. So before we draw Bigfoot, we're gonna do one more thing. And I know some of you guys are still painting your background, but uh, for those of you guys that aren't painting your background and are ready to move on to the next step, we're gonna do stars all over our sky, okay? So how we're gonna do stars all over the sky is we're gonna do a splatter technique onto the, onto the canvas, okay? So you're gonna take your brush, you're gonna take a little bit of white paint on it Okay, you don't need a lot, just a little bit to start. Okay, and then you're gonna dip your brush into your water bowl and you're gonna tap, you hear that? I'm tapping my, my brush until no drips of water come off because I don't want drips on my brush, okay? And then once you have taken all the drips off your brush, you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna flick at your canvas, okay? And that's gonna give you stars. Make sure that uh, anything <laughs> anything behind the canvas is covered or your surface is covered, okay? But see, I'm just taking my fingertip and I'm just pulling those bristles really quickly to add stars to my sky. And the closer you do it, the closer the stars will be, the further away, the further it'll spray all over your canvas. And also, um, you gotta worry about hitting other stuff in your in your area, so be careful with that, okay? And then you're gonna clean off your brush again. So that's how I got the stars, and then if I wanted some even more detailed stars, I can take a little paintbrush and the handle of my little paintbrush and just put a little white paint on the end and then I can add some little, like if you wanted to make a constellation or something, you could definitely just add a few And obviously those are gonna show up better in the darkest areas on the on the paint there, but see? And I will tell you guys the more like stars and the more spray and all that stuff you guys have, the, the cooler it'll look when you add the trees and all that stuff later. So yeah, so I'm just using the handle 
of the paintbrush, okay? Not the finger paints work, girl. I'm happy to see you guys be creative and show me what you can make with what you've got. It's all about um, being ingenuitive here. You gotta be flexible, okay? Sometimes <laughs> we don't have everything that we need and we just gotta be able to make it work with what we got. So here's my spacey sky, okay? There's my spacey sky. And so I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper to practice um, drawing and painting Bigfoot first. Uh, that way you guys can see how to do it. And then you can take your piece of paper and you can redraw or if you're nervous about painting directly on your canvas, you can always take your drawing and you can cut out your drawing and then glue it onto your painting and then you have a mixed media painting, okay? So how many of you guys are ready to do Bigfoot? The benefit of doing the scratch piece of paper too is then you can really see about how big you want um, your Bigfoot to be in comparison to the rest of your canvas too because obviously you don't want to take over the whole thing. So look, here's the original. See how different my background is? It's pretty, right? I like all the colors. So this is how big he is. He goes about halfway up, but if you want him to be shorter or you're working with a smaller canvas, you know, make sure that your scrap piece of paper is gonna fit on there with how big you want your Bigfoot to be, okay? That's gonna be really important to make sure that you get all the proportions that you need, okay? Your stars made white streaks. If your stars made white streaks, then you can take a dry brush or a paper towel and you can dab the canvas or you can, you know, do that wiping technique with the paint. Uh, but remember, we're going to be painting the trees over the top too. So you can do another layer, but you can use paper towel to dab it. You can use more paint uh, to dab or to blend. Uh, or you can just paint a tree over it or put your big foot over there. That's why it's so, so important to do the tapping to make sure that your brush is not too wet when you do those stars. Like I said, it, it gets kind of gets kind of wily if you're not careful. Or you're just having a meteor shower, and that's just how we have to look at it. We have to look at the positives there, Kenzie. You have a meteor shower, and I'm sure it's fabulous. You guys ready to learn how to draw Bigfoot? Are we all on the same page yet? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to do Bigfoot. I see one thumb. <laughs> I see two thumbs. I see three, four. We're getting there. Am I going too fast, guys? <laughs> All the thumbs all right so here let's go back to the original again one more time so we were using a combination of blue white and red to fill up our sky so we want our sky to look like nighttime so we want to make the colors dark enough that they're gonna contrast with the black that's in the sky so we started in one corner with dark blue, and then we started to mix in some purples or some pinks. This is what I ended up doing for my sky afterwards. I was really feeling those pinks and purples today, so I did that. But the only thing we wanted to do when we were painting, we wanted to make sure we were either using our stippling technique where we're tapping to make those cloud shapes, or we're using a thatching brush stroke where we're wiping our brush. Okay, and we did a nice combination. And then next, we dipped our brush in, our dry brush in water, or I mean in white paint and then in water. Then we tapped off our brush, and then we did the splatter effect to make stars, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to, to learning how to do Bigfoot, guys. So for those of you guys that are still painting your sky, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we'll come back to you if you need help, okay? So. Bigfoot is like this. We want him to be no more than half the size of our canvas, right? Unless you want him to be really giant. So having that scrap piece of paper is good for figuring out portion, okay? So we're gonna start with just a stick figure. So you're gonna need your pencil, you're gonna need a scrap piece of paper, okay? And then we're gonna start from the bottom of the paper in the middle, and you're just gonna draw a line going up like that. How long do you want the line to be? Oh, a little bit more than an inch maybe. Um, 
like I said, you can adjust afterwards. So you just want it to be as long as you want his shin to be. So in this one, okay, maybe it's a little bit longer than that, maybe like an inch and a half. So this part, this line is going to be your Bigfoot's shin, okay? And so every line that we make is going to be this long. So if this is his foot to his knee, we're going to take the pencil like this and you can hold the pencil up and measure how long that line is and pinch it. And that's going to tell you how long the next line needs to be, which is that's going to be the other part of his leg. Okay. So you're going to draw a line going up and then you're going to draw a line going back. Okay. And that's going to be, this is his knee right here. Is that weird? But this is how we figure out our portion for the Bigfoot. So all the lines for our Bigfoot have to be this long. Okay, so this is his shin. There's his knee. That's his thigh. Okay. There's Bigfoot stuff right there. So that means that the next leg that's going to be back because he's walking. So let's go like this. So it's next to the picture here. Okay. This one's going to come down. Okay, there's his other knee, and then this line's going to come back. So look, all of these lines, this line is the same length as this line, and this line, and this line. Okay, so that's how you get it all proportionate. See that there? Okay, so you start with the line as far as how tall you want. The irony of this painting is we're painting Bigfoot, but we're not going to be painting any feet because <laughs> they're going to be covered with bushes. How ironic is that? But yeah, so we make one line going up, straight up, and that's going to be this part of the leg. One line going back, that's going to be to about right here. This line's coming down, it's going to go to his other knee, and then this line coming back because he's going for a walk in the woods, okay? So then we're going to do one, two, okay? Each of those lines... One, two, okay? It's gonna be the same length as this. One, two. All right, and then at the top of that line, you're gonna draw a T. This is gonna be your Bigfoot's shoulders. Okay, and then once you've drawn his shoulders, so remember, don't make this line insanely big unless you want him to look like a linebacker. You probably don't want that line to be, like, make it the same length as all the other lines, okay? And that'll be just perfect. And then when you want to draw his arms, the, this is his shoulder and this is his shoulder, okay? So you're going to draw a line coming out, see, like this one. There's his elbow, and then this line's coming down. Okay, and then this will be his, his furry hand right there. And then this arm would be down, okay, elbow, and then whatever you want this hand to be doing. If you want him to be doing yoga or whatever, you would make his hand go like that, okay? See, we're starting with a stick figure, our stick figure skeleton. It looks like a constellation, right? But yeah, so all of these lines are all the same length. Is that weird? <laughs> you guys have any questions? Okay, and then we can dress a draw an oval in the middle here, and that's going to be his head. Because Bigfoot doesn't have a neck right here. It's very furry and hairy. <laughs> So give me a thumbs up if you're done with your stick figure. Can you guys see that very clearly? So we started with one line coming up from the bottom of the paper. Okay. So when you paint this in to your, um, to your background, you might want to put, you know, some bushes down on the bottom floor and then put Bigfoot above that. But, um, you can decide that later. Or if you want him to be shorter, then these lines would just be shorter. Okay? All right. So we have our stick figure. So we started with a line coming up. 
back. So here's his knee. There's Bigfoot stuff coming down. There's another knee. And so this is the other thing. Bigfoot, this is called a silhouette, which means there's no detail to it other than the outside line. And in order to make an effective silhouette, you have to have positive and negative contrast. So our color is the positive contrast and then the silhouette is the negative contrast. So in order for people to identify this with something familiar, you have to have at least a familiar outline or you can leave space in between the arms or the legs so that people know what you're looking at. It'll be it'll have bony knees until we make hair. It's going to be it's going to be bony until we get to the to the fur part. Okay, so you can take your little tiny brush if you have, or if you have like a little short, you know, a little flat brush, you can use this. But if you have a little tiny detail brush like that, that'll work too. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to take your black paint and then you're going to fill this in. So you're going to have to do Bigfoot twice, guys, unless you really like this one and then you can... Um... So see, you're going to fill in the circle with black paint. Okay, ta-da! And then we're just gonna give him a little bit of a furry edge. So you'll notice, look, the top of his head is round, and he's got a little bit of fur on the sides, like a wookie. So we just want to make sure that we're starting from the black here, and then we're just doing short, very, very short lines that come out and down at an angle. Okay, just so we can make sure that there's, it looks like there's some hair happening. Okay, but that's very important. If you make the hair go up, it's going to look like he got electrocuted. And if you make it, you know, go straight out, same thing. So you want to make sure that it looks like um, the hair is at least kind of coming down. Okay, so just start from the middle and then you can short, make short, short, short brush strokes coming out to fill that up. And the bonus here is if you made your head too small or something like that, you can always paint it in and make it bigger. Okay. So then we're going to outline, this is the middle of the body, okay, and there's our shoulders, we can outline those. And here's how we make it look like it starts to fill in, okay, so we started with the stick figure here. All you're going to do is you're going to start each brush stroke on the line, never away from the line and come in, you always start at the line and then down and at an angle, just very short short, short, and then go to the other side, short, short, short. Okay, if you run out of paint, you come back and get more. Okay, so there's his furry arm, okay? And then you would do the same thing down here, da, da, da. And because he's furry, we don't have to draw hands because we can just pretend there's a furry, there's a furry hand right there. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to do the same thing on this one where you start on the line and then see how I'm going. So you're not going straight out. You're making sure that your hair is starting on the line and you're going down and at an angle, really short to start. So you can make the arms skinny and then if you need to make them bigger later, you can come back in and make them bigger. But it's always better to start small and then come back and, and make it bigger when you need to. Okay, so I'm starting from the line. See line? And then I'm always starting at the line and then slightly pulling out in a way. Okay? Furry Bigfoot. Okay, so he's going to have a big, a big furry chest, right? So we can kind of fill this all in right here. So here's his armpit. We can fill this in in kind of like a triangle shape. Me Bigfoot, me Harry, me have big chest, or she, mama, could be a mama, we don't know. Okay, so I'm going to fill this in so that at least there's like a little space so the armpit is filled in, okay? And then you can use the same brush strokes here where you start down and then you start to fill it in. Okay? And same thing in the front. You can fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. And if he's too skinny, you can make his arm a little bit thicker by bringing it, like, see if this arm is too skinny, you can make it 
a little bit thicker in the bicep, whatever you need to do, okay? And we wanna make sure that, you know, Bigfoot's got a, got a booty so you can make this a little round back here. <laughs> Bigfoot got booty. So I just made a little backward C right there just to make sure he had a little, a little booty. And then same thing down here. So these are, you draw the line and then you do short angled lines on both sides. So you don't want to miss, do one side and then not do the other. So, and it seems like it's not going to fill in, but I promise you that once you get going, it'll start to fill in. Okay. What I like about this kind of a silhouette is that you can look at it and you can analyze it and you can go, oh, it looks weird. What do I need to do to adjust it? And then there's very simple things that you can do to adjust. Like if your leg was too low, you can make all the hair go up higher. See, if I felt like that was too low and I wanted it to be higher, I could just do the fur on the top. If I felt like he was too skinny, he went on a diet and I wanted to, you know, give him more of that magic dad bod. <laughs> I could definitely give him more of a belly here in the front. See, all I'm doing, guys, is I have my line and then I'm adding my fur da -da 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 -da, on both sides. So what I want you guys to think about, too, is think about, like, have your partner or your mom or your dad or... Um, one of your kids stand up and stand in this position and look at him and look at their body and think about this. Okay. So we made it so that he had his, has no neck because he's covered in hair, man. So you're not going to be able to see his neck. Okay. His shoulders are broad, but they're flat. And then you want to think about where your body gets thicker and where it gets thinner. So like your shoulders are going to be broad. It's going to be wide up in this area, but as the waist comes down, it'll be a little bit skinnier. You want to not forget to add a little booty. <laughs> and then remember, the top of the legs are always going to be thicker. And then as it gets to the knee, it'll get a little skinnier. And then like where the calves are, it might get a little bit bigger. And then as it gets to the ankle, it might get a little skinnier. Here we go. So that's my Bigfoot. That was my on-the-fly painting with you guys. But, I mean, you guys can... Um, like I said, you can make him thick. Like if he's too skinny, you can always make him a little bit thicker. Uh, but it's easier to start with him skinny, and then you can definitely adjust him after after the fact. Like if you did his body, and his body is huge, but his head was too small, just make his head a little bit taller, or make the fur go out a little bit further in the back. Don't worry about being able to see a face because it's just a shadow. Okay, so can you guys see that pretty clearly? There's my Bigfoot. So if you were freaked out about doing this again, you could definitely save this, cut this out, and then put it on your canvas with some, some glue later. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my little guy, I'm gonna put him to the side so you guys can still look at him. And I'm gonna start to decorate the bottom of my canvas, okay? So what I wanna do while you guys are waiting is I'm just gonna take my my big brush again. So if you have a pokey brush, great. If you don't have a pokey brush, that's okay. You can use a big brush. And I'm just gonna tap along the bottom of my canvas with black paint. Okay, so I'm gonna tap along the bottom because all of your sky should be dry by now. And I'm gonna make it look like there's some bushes along the bottom of the canvas here. So I'm just tapping. So I want the bottom of the canvas to definitely be filled in and solid but then I want it to be kind of lumpy as it comes up so that it looks like there's some bushes and some some wildness happening along the bottom here so I'm gonna do that all along the bottom of my canvas first before I add any other details you guys hear the clock tower I live downtown Port Orchard we know what time it is it's painting time. All right. So there we go. So see, I just took my big brush and I got some black paint on it and I just tap, 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 tap. 
just like that along the bottom to make it look like there's some bushes for Bigfoot to walk in, okay? So I'll go over it again. So don't worry if you missed the first time on how to make Bigfoot, I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna do it on my canvas, okay? Yeah, so once you have Bigfoot, you've learned how to do Bigfoot, um, you're gonna take your black paint and you're gonna take your big brush and you're gonna tap some bushes along the bottom here so Bigfoot has something to walk in, okay? And if you're nervous about just directly painting on your canvas, you can definitely draw Bigfoot first where you want him. So how we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our line. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see because it's in pencil, so maybe I will do it in paint. Let's see here. So yes, if you are if you are feeling fully prepared, you can totally just go right onto your canvas. So make sure that if you draw him on here, that you're doing his leg from the top of the bushes here. That way, his leg doesn't end up looking super short uh, and hidden down in the bushes there. So I did my line coming up. There's his knee. My line going back. Okay, and I made sure that this line and this line are the same length. Okay, and there's our Bigfoot stuff. We're just going to call it stuff. <laughs> And then he's walking sideways, so I'm going to do one leg like this. And then there's his other knee, and then the other leg that way. Okay. And then we're going to do two lines the same length, right? So we're going to go one, two. Okay. And then I'm going to make a line that's this long, but across the shoulders. Okay. So there's that. So this is his shoulders. So there's a dot and there's a dot for his shoulders. And then remember, we want to make him, he's walking. So we want to make our line that's the same length as these lines. So his arm's going to go back. There's his elbow. Okay, and it's going to come in a little bit. Ta-da! Okay, and then he's walking. So this one can come down. There's his other elbow. See, it looks like a constellation at first. He might be hitching a ride. Here's his hitchhiking hand coming out, okay? And then we're just going to draw his head right in the middle, right on top, okay, in an, in an oval. So to answer your question, Jessica, to fill in the chest, you can just, what I did was I just did like a triangle shape to start, like this, and then filled this in. And then when we add all the fur to everything, you can just do it from the edges of the triangle. Oh, and so I did the triangle for the chest to fill in the chest. And then I did a little, in the middle here, I did a little badonkadonk. So Bigfoot's got a booty. Because can't forget to give Bigfoot a booty. He sits on rocks and, and logs and stuff a lot. We need to <laughs> make sure that He's safe and padded out there in the woods. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fill in our details. Okay. And then remember, when he has a hairdo, his hairdo is going to come down. Slanted down. And you're going to fill in the neck area because Bigfoot doesn't need it. He has a neck. It's just under all of his hair. Okay. And then when we do the fur on the arms, you're going to start from the line. Always start from the line and pull out. Because that's also going to give you a more like pointed line. If you start away and then pull towards the arm, it's going to um, make a weird, weird brush stroke. This will give you a more fur-like brush stroke if you're starting from the line and then pulling away. And then remember, we don't need to worry about making detailed hands and all that stuff because they're just covered in hair. So we'll just pretend that they're there, okay? And if, if he had kind of a pinhead or you want to adjust his shoulders, you can just take your brush and you can make those a little bit thicker where you, where you need to. And again, if he starts out with super skinny arms, that's okay. 
he can have skinny arms to start, and then if you need to, like, beef it up and, you know, maybe maybe Bigfoot took some steroids and you wanted to be more muscular, you can give him some bigger biceps, you know, by filling in those areas and making it thicker in there. So the reason why we start at the line and then pull away is because that's what's going to give you that fur-like texture so um because it's going to be more pointed as you pull very short brush strokes pulling away you also want to make sure that your hair is going down at a slant you don't want it to be going up or straight out or else it's going to look like bigfoot got hit by lightning unless that's the effect you're going for and if that's the effect you're going for right on guys that's cool with me <laughs> And then you can just fill it in. So I felt like his leg was a little too close right here. So on this last one, instead of like on the top of this leg, I made it furry just on the top. A little bit thicker. And then just very thin on the bottom, just on this leg. Just that way there was more of a gap in between his legs. So you can see and if he was too skinny you can definitely you know give him more of a more of a belly and adjust as you go so the irony of our painting Bigfoot here is we're not painting feet we're just doing a lot of fur <laughs> so the idea here is that the feet are gonna be down in the in the bushes you can draw feet if you want I've had people do this class with me and then make Bigfoot like he's sitting in a yoga position or he's doing jumping jacks or so the benefit of knowing how to proportion the lines by using the stick figure method is you can make him doing all different kinds of positions and you guys can play later like on paper or whatever and make him do whatever you want so you just want to make sure that like the area between his armpits is filled in you know make sure that he's got a booty Make sure that his legs are, he's strong. He goes and walks up hills and mountains and on rocks and logs and stuff, guys. So make sure his legs are thick enough that, you know, he looks muscly. And then again, think about proportions. Like you're going to be thicker in this area. Arms are going to be thicker by the shoulders, then get skinnier as they get to the elbow. They're going to be thicker in this area and then get skinnier as they go to the hand. You know, the waist will be skinnier than the chest, but then the thighs will be thicker and then get skinnier as they get to the knee. They'll be thicker in the calf area, etc. There's my Bigfoot. What do you guys think? Does it look like Bigfoot? Anybody want to buy a painting? Yeah, he's got a booty on him. You're right, Laura. Booty. Thanks, Deborah. I bet you're doing awesome too. All right, so after everybody has their Bigfoots, we're gonna add some trees into this bad boy. Yours doesn't look like Bigfoot. Maybe it looks more like, maybe it's a Star Wars painting. Maybe you can send me, so guys too, if you do have um, trouble with your Bigfoot and you wanna make adjustments, you can video chat me or you can uh, send me a picture and I can definitely help you with making adjustments to your paintings, okay? I'm all about helping you guys have the product that makes you feel the proudest and I promise you guys, people are shocked all the time. It's all about just making very small adjustments. Sometimes just the littlest tiny brushstroke can change the whole appearance of your whole painting. It's so surprising. So yeah, Jerrica, just get a hold of me and I, I'm more than happy to help you out afterwards. Okay, so I know some of you guys are gonna be working on this for a minute, but while you're working on that, we're gonna talk about what to do for these trees, okay? So spacing is really important because we're using black and you guys worked really hard on the background here so we don't wanna just cover your whole painting with black. So the reason why we did Bigfoot first is that way we can space out our trees where we need them to be to make sure that uh, you know, we still have color popping through but we're not just covering our whole canvas with black paint, okay? So we want to kind of have this um, 
fisheye effect though. So instead of making our trees go straight up and down, we're gonna kind of make them curve in from the side of our side of our canvas. So what you're gonna do is once your big foot is in place and you've got them where you want it, you're gonna decide where you want your first tree. So obviously I wouldn't put my first tree right next to his elbow because I wanna make sure I have enough room for all the other details that are that are next to it. So I might go a few inches over and then do like, so I'm gonna take black paint and I'm gonna draw like a, a line coming up, okay? And it doesn't have to be exactly this high. I just wanna make it a little bit higher than him, okay? So, and don't worry about the black line being solid or a perfect straight line because we're gonna paint over it so it doesn't matter. Um, we just need to make sure that that is there to start, okay? So if you did one here, then maybe when you did a tree on this side, you know, this tree would be like, you know, here. And it can be shorter or it can be taller. It's up to you how you want to how you want to place that. But so so if this one's slanted this way, you'd want to make sure that this one is at least an inch or so over and slightly slanted in the opposite direction. Okay? So when it comes to the trees, we're just going to take our little brush and if you have a uh, a big brush, that's okay too. You can just use like the corner edge of the brush to do this, but I'm going to use a little brush and you can just take black paint and we're just going to, we want to make sure our trees still look pointy. Here I'm going to show you one of these next to it so you can see that while I'm doing this. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to tap coming down just to make sure that it's still pointy but a little bit lumpy and then I'm going to tap off to the side here. Maybe does it help if I, let me see if I can do this closer. So you guys can see, is that better if I do it closer? All right, so I still want this to be pointy. So if your tree gets too short, you can always bring up your top. So I wanna tap and make it a little bit thicker in the middle. Okay, and then I'm gonna stagger. Instead of making the branch on the other side exactly on the same side, maybe I'll do it a little bit lower. Okay, so I'm just tapping with a good amount of paint. Tap, 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 and then as I tap away, this is going to be, first of all, we want to make sure that the top of the tree stays pretty skinny, so don't, like when you first do the um, the first couple of branches, you want to make sure that these, these lines are very short, okay? And then as you start to get maybe like a third of the way or halfway down the tree, you can start to make them a little bit, a little bit wider but see how they're a little bit thicker ch -ch -ch -ch, near the trunk and then they get thinner and pointier as you go away ch -ch 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 -ch. and you have to make that sound while you're painting you gotta go ch -ch 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 -ch. okay <laughs> so the the problem that people run into when they're painting these trees is they try and make these all exactly the same the same size or they try and make it too much of a pattern where they make everything exactly, you know, on the same, you know, same side. But it's better if you kind of stagger them a little bit so that they're, and then you also want them to kind of slant down. Think of it this way. When a branch grows on a tree, the weight of the branch as it gets bigger is going to make the branch pull down. So you wouldn't want it to go straight out or straight up. You want it to kind of slant down, just like when we were thinking about Bigfoot's hair we want it to kind of slant down okay and think of it this way too when you're out walking in the woods and stuff sometimes you know one branch is huge sometimes a branch broke off and then there isn't a branch in a section so you can skip an area if you want to make it interesting but all I'm doing is using black paint and we're using a good amount of it just so it's nice and solid I don't want too many gaps in there but I want the branches to be spread out enough that you're going to be able to see the color from all the beautiful part of the background that you did poking out from behind. Okay, so see as I start to get down here, I can start to make these branches a little bit thicker or a little bit bigger. And then don't worry if they go off the edge of the canvas. You want to kind of think of your painting like a snapshot. So it's not going to get every single section of a scenery in it. It's just going to get you know what's in the snapshot so it's okay if part of it gets cut off 
And then you want to make sure that these branches, even though your trunk ends here, you want to make sure that the branches go all the way down. Like just pretend that there's a trunk and just keep going until you get almost to the bottom. Does that make sense for the trees? So now I'm going to do this side. So same thing. So we did our line coming up. Okay, I'm just going to tap, 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 tap on the top just to make sure it still stays pointy. And then I'm just going to do a little tiny tap, tap, tap. Try and avoid making them exactly in the same spot if you can help it. Sometimes it's hard because we want to we want to create patterns, but you can also make your trunk a little bit thicker if you want to make it a little like if you feel like that would make it more interesting. And then if it accidentally, look, I have a branch here and it's going to cut through his hand. <gasps> Is that okay? It's totally okay because it's a silhouette. It's a shadow. Just as long as you don't completely block out all the detail in the painting, it's okay if some of these touch each other because he could be walking in front of that tree. He could be walking behind that tree and it's just going to add more illusion and dimension. We just don't want to fill up, you know, the whole area. So that's the only thing we have to be aware of when we're creating a silhouette. There we go. So if you guys enjoy the free painting classes like this, like I said, I have created a Patreon account and the Patreon, what it allows you to do is that if you subscribe to it, um, you have unlimited access to all of my painting classes. Um, I will mail you monthly postcards. We'll be like pen pal buddies and you'll have access to um, art prints and, you know, giveaways. And um, I also do, uh, you know, you have the option to get original art or jewelry and um, lots of other fun things like drawing techniques and tutorials. And so that's a cool way to help support if if you're wanting to support an artist or you're wanting to look for a creative outlet and then you can use that in your own time. Um, but, you know, like I said, um, during this time, I just think it's really important most of all for us just to be able to come together and, you know, put our heads together and be able to help and support each other, you know, during a time which is pretty difficult for a lot of different people. So I love that I'm able to offer you these classes, um, even if you can't afford them, because I know a lot of people are definitely not working right now. Um, and so, you know, hopefully this was a fun experience for you guys and you are able to enjoy and take something away from this. If you, uh, if you are one of the people working and you feel like, um, this brought you some kind of a value, I do have a virtual tip jar available where you can leave a little bit of a contribution or a tip to me, but again, it's not necessary. Um, I'm pretty happy with my tree so far. How are your trees doing? Is anybody having trouble with the trees? Do you guys need uh, advice or help with those? So the other thing when you're making the trees is make sure they're not all exactly the same height. So see here, this one's short, this one's taller. Okay, so you can even go up high on the, on the edge of the canvas. Just make sure that when you change the slant, it's not you don't want to slant here and then all of a sudden go super dramatic. You want to make sure it's very subtly slanted so and gradual, and that'll give you more of the fisheye fish eye effect. I can't wait to see your paintings and see how this worked out for everybody, especially those kiddos. I love it when the kids paint with me. I have a six-year-old daughter, and she paints with me quite often, and... Um, you know, she's becoming quite the little artist herself, and it's really fun to see how they interpret the directions and how they use their imaginations to create things, too. And, you know, same thing for all of you guys. How do you make your trees look more fluffy? So that means that you probably want to 
tap more with your brush in the middle. So instead of making your branches all exactly the same thickness, you want to make it a little bit thicker in the middle. So that means add more paint and make it a little bit thicker when you get closer to the trunk. And then as you get further away from the trunk, um, that's when you want to make your branch more pointy. Think about it this way. When a tree is growing, the branch is going to be little. So the little part as it grows is still going to be at the end, but it's going to become more full in the middle as it gets older. So you want the middle. So if you want your trees more fluffy, is add a little bit more paint in the middle, but you don't want them too fluffy because then you don't want them to be so filled in that you don't see the skyline anymore. So, so that's really important. Yours look like arrows. <laughs> well, trees kind of look like arrows. Think about Christmas trees. They're, you know, basically triangles. I am definitely interested to see how these are, these are going to turn out. Yolanda, aren't you like pro by now? You should, you should have, I bet your trees look awesome. What we tend to do and that we need to get out of the headspace of, I think a lot of times, especially if you're a new creator, is to be hyper critical of your work and remember that, you know, we're all learning. Even me, who's been painting for 20 years, I still paint stuff that I don't like. I'm still learning how to do new things. I'm learning how to make things better. Um, you're always learning. And so, you know, take it easy on yourself. <laughs> all right how many more trees should i do should we do a vote i'm gonna do two more trees i think do, do, do. how many other people's trees look like arrows how are those kiddos doing do their trees look good are they happy with their trees that's okay. It doesn't matter. You can have cedars. I can have firs. That's okay. No definition here. This is not realism. This is impressionism. <laughs> it's kind of cartoony. So if you guys have suggestions for other things that you would like to paint, um, feel free to DM me or post in the post afterwards and share your ideas with me. I'm trying to be as flexible as possible during this time. So I am staying at home and working and so I can, you know, fit schedules that are that are better. If you guys think of a better time, I thought four was nice because it's before dinner. It's not too late. Um, that way people on the East Coast that are watching don't have to stay up super late and they can also catch the videos. But again, if you missed um, the live video, you know, share with friends and let them know they can watch the replay. And please, 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 after you're all done, share your results, share your experience with other people. We love it when you leave us uh, reviews. That's how you can help support our small business. And, you know, I just hope you guys had fun painting like I did. This is really nice for me. <laughs> Cammie, you're not so sure about your trees? I bet they look great. But did you have fun? Did you have fun? Hopefully you had a good time. All right, this is my last tree, you guys. My last one. I'm going to call it after this. I might add a few more bushes. I don't know. Maybe a few more stars. You can also, after you get everything all filled in, if you decide you need more stars, you can come back in with your handle of your little brush and you can tap in little things. I have doubles of these paintings too. If you guys know somebody that would appreciate my painting, DM me. I might hook you up with a hook you up with a painting. <laughs> I've been trying to think of um, different options for things that I could do with all of my, my double paintings. If you guys have suggestions for me, then let me know your ideas. Let's brainstorm together. So if your trees are not that filled in, 
It's probably because you were leaving too big of a gap. So I probably try to leave no more than like an inch of space between each branch. And then I just tap and make them a little bit thicker towards the middle. Yes, Darren, that's the last part of the painting. I, I just wanted to do the trees first before we do the moon. So we'll talk about that. So those are my trees. Let me move this so it's not so confusing here. So there's my painting for now. So if you would like to add a moon into your painting, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but at the beginning of, uh, I said, find like an old Tupperware dish or a cup or a bowl or something. And then you can take this. You want to make sure that your trees are dry because if I put this onto my tree while it's wet, that's going to be no good. But I can take this and I can place it onto my canvas and I can take my pencil and I can trace out, like if I want to have a whole giant round moon, then I can trace the whole thing. In the original though, I just had a crescent. So all I did was I traced half the circle onto my canvas. You guys probably can't see that because it's very light pencil, but this should all be dry now. And so um, I took my Tupperware or whatever you have for a round thing. And then I took some white paint this is gonna be the hard part for you guys with non-steady hands, okay? So you wanna take paint on your brush, and I like to dip and then kinda of roll my brush on the side of my plate, or on the side of my cup or whatever, and then you're gonna you're gonna trace that line that you drew with the, the pencil, okay? So I'm gonna trace that line. So I like to start at the edge and then blend in because it's gonna be harder to, to get the point. Okay, the lower you hold your paintbrush, the more it's gonna be easy to control, control the line. And if you firmly press your brush against the canvas, that's gonna be the other way to control the paint. And the more you run your brush back and forth over the paint while it's wet and fresh, the more it will be blended, okay? And so to get that crescent, I want to leave these points skinny and then I'm just gonna build up the middle. I'm just gonna build it up like that. So I wanna make sure that it stays pointed here And if you prefer to have just a round moon, just do a little tiny round moon. Um, the crescent is probably the hardest, the hardest part of the whole painting here, guys. Okay, so you can make that as big or as small as you want. So if you want it to be thicker, you can definitely make it thicker. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. If you want the, the moon to have a little bit of pink in it or something, you can definitely brush some other colors into it. If you want to add a little a little face to the moon, you could probably add a little, little face and make your painting whimsical. After all, it does have Bigfoot in it. So again, the more you run your brush over the paint while it's wet, or fresh, the more blended it'll be. And when you're coming back over the lines, always start on the inner edge to push because those bristles will spread out. So you wanna make sure that you're not making your moon get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's easier to adjust if you start on the inside and then gradually blend and push out on the paint. Okay. That's it guys. That's all I've got for you. Ta -da! What do you think? <laughs> do you need to look at the painting some more?
I bet you guys all did great. I wish that I could walk around and look at all your paintings right now so I could give you tips and help you like I normally do in a in a public class. But, you know, we do what we can with what we've got, right? Anyway, I'm just so grateful that you guys were here today to paint with me. We're going to be painting again tomorrow night. Make it a date night, even if you're stuck in your house. We're going to be painting um, this rainbow drip painting with the Seattle skyline. Okay, and this is a really fun rainbow painting, and it's, you know, nice and bright. Anybody can do it any age. And if you need a paint kit, let me know. I've got supplies still a little bit. I'm running out, I'm running low on some paint, uh, paint supplies. But I do have some kits available still for you guys. And if you don't have an easel, that painting does require an easel. So go back to either my YouTube channel or the Facebook page. And you can see how to make a, a quick and easy easel to use at home with your old Amazon boxes or something, okay? So anyway, thank you so much for supporting me, guys. Check out the Patreon uh, link if you're interested in uh, full access to all the other paint classes. And I really pr appreciate you guys viewing and supporting. I'll show you guys the painting one more time. This is what we ended up with tonight. There's our big guy, there's our moon and our beautiful sky. If you know anybody who wants an extra Bigfoot painting, let me know, guys. I appreciate you and have a good night.